Hello, I'm Michael Pollitt and I'm Professor of Business Economics at the Cambridge Judge Business School and I'm delighted to be one of the co-editors of the handbook on electricity markets. I'm going to uh, briefly introduce some of the chapters in the handbook which are in part two uh, which are about adapting to new technologies and new policy priorities and we've got a number of uh, very exciting chapters in this part of the book. Um, so for instance, the uh, chapter 15 is about what impact will renewables have on the operation of electricity markets. And that's written by uh, my good friend, Richard Green. Green analyzes how the rise in renewable electricity supply will affect electricity market design. As he points out, context is important while some jurisdictions have seen large rises in their renewable electricity share uh, in total production. Um, the, it varies uh, significantly between different places and low carbon electricity supply is still dominated by hydro, nuclear and biomass. Green suggests that in the medium term, there's plenty of scope for existing market design to accommodate rising shares of renewables in many jurisdictions. Uh, market design is not just about matching aggregate electrical energy supply and demand. It's about maintaining power quality at every node in real time as well. Thus, power markets must procure voltage and constraint management services. This is the focus of Chapter 16 in the handbook, which is written by myself, uh, which discusses the extent to which increasingly distributed electricity generation from intermittent renewables and locally flexible electricity demand in the presence of storage and electric vehicles can be accommodated within the two benchmark electricity designs that we currently see in Europe and the US as exemplified by PJM's market. Reflecting on the experience of pricing and rationing on the internet, I suggest that very high levels of intermittent renewables in some future electricity market design which combines uh, price signals with non-price rationing of intermittent renewables, uh, that could match demand uh, to priority order of devices and be a more acceptable way of uh, regulating electricity systems than pure uh, price-based rationing. The future of electricity uh, supply is not just uh, a function of technology or market design. Um, it's importantly determined by the success of the business models of the companies uh, that operate within the electricity sector. The future of various electricity business models is the focus of chapter 17 in the handbook uh, by uh, my dear colleague, uh, Jean-Michel Glachon. Uh, Glachon unpacks and distinguishes a range of different business models within uh, the electricity sector within both the competitive and regulated parts of uh, the uh, supply industry. These new business models might also involve aggregators moving from retail into wholesale markets, peer-to-peer -peer bypassing of conventional utilities and the emergence of behind the meter territories. In this changing environment, grid companies are facing regulatory pressures to adapt their business models. Uh, Glashaw, uh, argues that this fundamentally changes uh, the nature of their business model from a fit and forget um, asset owner role uh, to companies that are engaged in seeking asset lights innovations. What are the prospects for the electrification of transport? Uh, this is uh, something addressed in chapter 18 of the handbook by Bentley Clinton, Christopher Nittle and Konstantinax uh, Metaxoglu. Um, these authors focus on the prospects for electric vehicles. Uh, passenger cars consume 50% of surface transport vehicle energy demand, and recent technological developments have seen the takeoff in sales of battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid uh, electric vehicles. Um, the authors of this chapter show that many electricity systems could likely cope with 100% penetration of battery electric vehicles in the time frame over which such a rise in penetration is likely to occur, which is to 2040. 
um, but that the um, life cycle economics of electric vehicles remains challenging over the next 10 years. What are the prospects for the electrification of residential and commercial heating and cooling? This is an issue discussed in uh, chapter 19 by Mathilde Farjadi and uh, David Reiner. Uh, the authors of this chapter outline the scale of the heating challenge. Current global non-electrified heating demand is twice as much as current electricity demand. Thus, the electrification of heating would significantly increase the demand for electricity. Uh, technologies do exist to decarbonize heating and cooling, uh, including electric heat pumps, district heating, PV, green hydrogen from renewables via electrolysis or with blue hydrogen from natural gas with carbon capture and sequestration and the use of biomass and biomethane. Uh, the authors conclude by showing that all major possible opportunities to decarbonize the heating sector come with associated uh, challenges. So uh, um, this group of, ch of chapters offer clear and exciting insights into the difficulties for the electricity sector in living up to the policy demands placed on it by deep decarbonisation policies. But I do uh, commend them to you. Thank you very much for watching.